I'm Chicano and this is paradise so today <clears throat> I'm about to tell you guys another Pico Union story uh, this is a story of um, how my homeboy Travieso lost his life and Travieso was a funny guy man he was funny he was cool hey um, nothing bad to say about him everybody loved him you know and uh yeah man we took his loss pretty bad including myself um you know i just i can honestly say that's like the first time i started experiencing uh depression you know um it was bad because it seemed like around that time a lot of homies were dying not just in pico union but other places you know because that homies everywhere um like i said i used to get around and uh the story goes like this um we had a backyard boogie like we always do you know we had it at the homeboy uh, happy's pad uh which was right there on um if you go between bonnie bray and westlake on 11th street there was a little alley right there and that alley was notorious um we quote unquote battled for that alley with the street criminals and uh, us uh, but um yeah the street criminals ended up dying out but that's you know neither here nor there and happy's pad was right there and we're kicking it having a backyard boogie um we're pounding smoking weed uh p dogs were rolling you know cocoa puffs were rolling hey it's a pico union lifestyle man everything and anything went you know when it comes to drugs and that's where god put me that's where god put my family and that's where i was raised is uh you know i'm proud of it now because of who i am do i wish i wasn't raised there yeah because i got mental problems because of that you know um i got ptsd and i'm gonna get into ptsd later on in you know in my videos you know on my youtube channel because it's something that's major it's something that's major and it's something that like man you're basically a prisoner of your own mind is what it is and um so yeah in that respect i wish i wasn't raising pico union you know but i was and there was drugs everywhere and that day was no different you know what i mean um there was so much tension there's so much like i don't want to say paranoia but in sometimes sometimes there was especially when you smoke cocoa puffs and pee dogs you know but um just like uh we we had like just like a violent mentality you know like um always waiting for shit to pop always ready to like you know um ready to pull out the strap and dump on somebody you know what i mean and um just willing to get down and beat people up willing to whatever you know going to get high you know like willing to bust 211s and all that you know there's things that i've been praying about in regards to um what i'm sharing here on youtube because it's difficult it really is man you really have to watch what you say because um there's certain things that you that you that you got to keep to yourself and i'm learning but i want to be as open as possible so that anybody that's watching these videos can um benefit from it you know and by that i mean if you yourself are going through something you yourself are like struggling with um life in the hood because life in the hood man that's a sickness i'm not gonna lie that's a sickness i don't care what anybody tells you man life in the hood is hard it is difficult not many of us come out of this life and the ones that do come out screwed up like me you know it's a battle it's a battle every day every day is a battle you know um and ptsd pops up in like different ways so many different ways anger you know um paranoia but like i said that, that's not what this video is about um this video is about traps that's what we used to call them traps travieso so we're getting high you know music's bumping loud and then here's the problem you know then the sherm starts to being passed around and i don't know if you guys know about sherm 
uh, that's PCP. Um, you know, water, wet, it's got tons of names, yerm, you know, but um, it starts being passed around and not many people fuck with it because it's it's crazy i mean people have done things on it um i don't know how it is now but back in the day if you were caught with it um if the cops caught you with sherm that was attempted murder boom that's all you need to know about that drug all right and uh it's it's a gangster drug that's what it is you know they call it that act right juice because um i mean if you're a gangster if you're a g that's exactly what it did to you it made you act right you know it made you act like solid like unafraid you did what you had to do you know busted crimes with it you know 211s busted uh 187s whatever it was it was the act right juice and if fools rolled up on you man you weren't scared you know because you were on that juice so um but not many people could deal with it because it really is you have to have a strong mind to mess with that stuff um and well it started passing around you know started rolling and uh rolling i mean homie started smoking it and um you know i took a couple puffs and travs travieso rest in peace took a couple puffs and it was his first time and i was like hey travieso you don't want this man you don't want this you do not want this homie you don't and um he said yeah i do i do want it you know and um the homie passed it to him and he took a hit and then he took another hit and i was like hey homie that's not how you smoke it you know um and he's like hey let me smoke and in retrospect talking to other homies uh travieso was going through some shit, man through a breakup you know his parents his dad had just died man hey and if you guys see my last video you guys know how if you if you have a dad that's a good dad that took care of you which many of us don't but if you did and he's gone and you loved him <laughs> wow that pain is like it's deep it cuts deep and travieso lost his dad and so i don't know if he was trying to kill the pain because anybody that ever smoked sherm can tell you what it does it kills mental mental pain you know it really does it just zaps you right the fuck up you know and um but you got to know how to smoke it and it's not popular because most people smoke it and you know they don't they don't know how to act and unfortunately i think that's what happened this day um i took off you know i i took off you know like i always did i was my own dude man you know I was always with the homies doing whatever you know the homies were doing but i always like to put in work and i would honestly you know i was i would just go by myself you know i had a cadillac i would go especially when i got shermed out man i would love to just go cruising and i would go into rival neighborhoods with the heater you know i have my spray can and my dog rusty my pit bull rusty and honestly i did this because i felt judged i felt judged by the homies you know i was different I was different and I felt judged by the homies because um, I did things different. But I didn't care to do it. I knew what I wanted and I, I, I used to love putting in work. And so um, I would go with my spray can, you know, go mob up the streets, whatever. And my dog, you know, my pit bull with me. And that's exactly what I did. I did. The homies wanted to keep kicking it. They brought, you know, some females over or whatever. But then, you know, I heard that the homeboy Travieso, he got in his car and he took off. I don't know where they were going. At this time, we were busting missions on the enemies. And I'm talking about OG missions um, with uh, AK-47s and stuff, you know? And um, uh, I don't know if that's what, I don't know. I don't know the whole story, but I don't know if that's what they went to go do or whatever or what. But for whatever reason, they got uh, Travs, Travieso got in his car and um he took off and i don't know where he went but he ended up getting chased by um lapd you know because uh when you're shermed out uh you don't drive the way you're supposed to uh, think about being drunk times 10 you know uh you really swerve 
and I know this from personal experience because um, I got a DUI while I was shermed out. And then I'll go into that uh, detail. I'll go into detail about that at another time. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is what I can figure because I wasn't in the car. All I know is what I saw on the news because he was on the news. So, um, and then just from reading the newspaper, man, back in the day. And I just wish that I had links to it right now. I've been searching all over the internet, you know, to try to post it on here, his video, because he was on the news. And um, I haven't been able to find it. But I'm... Trav's Travieso is, is uh, being relived through me. I'm telling his story, you know, because he was an OG, man. I love that guy. And you know what makes matters worse is that he had a little, a little uh, brother named Benson. And Benson, if you're seeing this, man, sh reach out reach out to me homie because i got your back um and he left them alone you know and benson was young he was he must have been like what 12 when he passed because um travieso's mom she had issues you know she had issues i'm not even gonna go into what type of issues they had she had but she had issues and her dad was his dad was like oh gee he was like you know he held it down he like held it down and you know he loved his family so when he died, um, when Trav's, Travieso's dad died and then Travieso died, uh, you could basically say that Benson was by himself. And so um, what happened is, uh, you know, he took off and he started getting chased by LAPD. And then uh, CHP um, started chasing him. And then um, the helicopter, the ghetto bird came in and started uh you know following travieso and he was jamming dude he was jamming because i saw on him he was jamming boom just dipping dipping dude and they couldn't catch him and i was like man he's gonna get away he's gonna get away you know he's gonna get away and then boom he crashes dude crashes to the center divider car the car exploded the car exploded he died in a, in a blaze of fire, which uh, is a messed up way to go. And my hope is that when he hit, that he died instantly because dying being uh, burned alive, especially while you're conscious, that must be no good. And so um, we can talk about so many things, you know, like the cops were at fault so-and-so was at fault you know um he was at fault you know the homies were at fault it doesn't matter who was at fault um what matters is that he lost his life that day and this is just another pico unit story you know what i'm saying there's many out there there's many out there man and i'm just trying to bring these stories to the forefront because pico union life is hard man it's hard dude and Anybody that follows me that's from Pico Union, you guys can vouch, man. We go through some shit. And you know what? It's not even like out in the, it's not even out there. Like people don't know about it because there ain't no movies about us. How many movies are there by of South Central, of Compton, who have everything, man. But that life is different. It's not like Pico Union. Pico Union is different, man. You know, it really is. It's different than East LA. I, I have homies from East LA come kicking in Pico Union and they're like, damn, this is the ghetto, bro. And I'm like, yeah. I know, you know, but it's like a different type of ghetto, you know, and um, we don't have famous rappers putting us on the map like that. You know, we don't have, um, you know, um, we don't have no fucking uh, Ice Cube, you know, uh, you know, out there representing for us. You know, we don't. The rappers that we do have, they're, you know, they're underground, you know, they're uh, local, you know, I mean, they're recognizing the Chicano community, but not worldwide, which is what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? I, I'm over here, dude, in fucking Europe. I see fucking NWA shirts. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I see Tupac shirts. Like, we don't have that. You know what I mean? And so, my goal is just to bring light to what Pico Union is. Because it's a, it's a rough place. You know, it really is. I don't know how it is now, but when I grew up, man, hey, oh, PTSD, baby, is like, I hate having that. But that's what I have, you know? And that's stuff that uh, soldiers have. You know what I mean? And if you grew up in Pico Union, you probably have PTSD and you're just undiagnosed. You know what I'm saying? And there's no medication that you could take for that. You just have to be 
ballsy you got to be a man and just take it you know what i mean and uh have to deal with it it's sad that we have to go through it but it is what it is the number one way to cope with it is uh to give all your worries to our lord and savior jesus christ because i travel everywhere and sometimes i'm like walking out at night i remember i was in costa rica man and i wasn't paranoid but I was out in Costa Rica at night when people told me, don't do it, you know, it's dangerous. But I was out there and you know what it kept me um, safe? It wasn't my Glock, you know, I didn't have it over there. It was my Bible. I had my Bible and I was walking around with my Bible everywhere. Who's gonna mess with somebody that has God backing him? Nobody, man, because you're basically like, you're doing God's work wherever you go, wherever you go. So if I could give you guys any type of advice, any type of advice that grew up in Pico Union or, um, you know, grew up in the hood in LA, Chicago, New York, anywhere, man. This goes out to anybody that grew up in a hood because you got trauma. It's not just about Pico Union, we all do. There's a big ass mass population in the United States that's got fucking mental problems and they're undiagnosed or they're trying to deny it, you know, so. This goes out to you guys. I really hope that you guys could um get better, you know, and I hope my videos help you guys, you know, because if they do, then, hey, I did my part. So, all right, man, that's it for this video. Travs, rest in peace. Um, Benson, I love you. And all the homies from Pico Union, hope you guys are doing better. All right.